Since the young nation needed a flag to fly, George Ross went to his niece, Betsy Ross, who was an excellent seamstress. He was accompanied by George Washington and Robert Morris, and they asked her to make the American flag. Young Betsy Ross went on to make several American flags for our new country. George Ross. George Ross. George Ross. George Ross was born in May of 1730 in Newcastle, Delaware into a very large family. He received a sound classical education at home. Then he proceeded to study law at the office of his older brother, John. George attained the bar in Philadelphia at the age of 20 and established his own practice in Lancaster. His political career began in 1768 when he was a representative to the Assembly of Pennsylvania. He was re-elected as a member every year until 1774. At that point, he was appointed to a seat in Congress and asked to report a set of instructions by which the assembly could redress the American grievances, maintain their American right, and establish that union and harmony which is most essential to the welfare and happiness of both countries." Unquote. Ross continued to serve his provincial legislature, was a member of the Committee of Safety for his colony in 1775. It was the circumstances of the state at a committee be appointed, which Mr. Ross was on, to report what was needed to be done for the safety of his state. He recommended collecting stores of ammunition and arms to repel any attacks that may be made by British troops. He was also asked to prepare a declaration of rights on behalf of the state for forming rules of order, what should be considered high treason against the state and the punishment which should be afflicted for that offense. In 1776 and 77, he was elected to the Continental Congress. He was not a member of the Congress when it voted for independence July 2nd. But he was able to sign the Declaration of Independence later on, July 4th, 1776, at the age of 46. He was also serving as a provincial legislature and the colonel in the Continental Army. That year, he also undertook negotiations with the Northwestern Indians on behalf of his colony and took a seat as vice president of the Constitutional Convention for Pennsylvania. Since our young nation needed a flag to fly, George Ross, George Washington, and Robert Morris went to Betsy Ross, who was an excellent seamstress, and asked her to make an American flag. Young Betsy Ross made several American flags for our new country, and she was George Ross's niece. George cheerfully sacrificed his private interest for the public good. Mr. Ross was given a sum of 150 pounds out of the county stock and was requested to accept it as a testimony of thanks from his county. He was told to purchase a plate, ornamented as he thought proper to remain with him as a testimony of the esteem that this county has for him by reason of his patriotic conduct in the great struggle of American liberty. This kindness must have been quite touching to him, but he declined accepting the present. He offered an apology for doing so, stating that he considered it the duty of every man to contribute by every means within his power to the welfare of his country without expecting rewards. On April 14, 1779, he was appointed to the judgeship of the Pennsylvania Court of Admiralty he was permitted to enjoy that honorable station for a short time. He died in that office in July of the same year from gout at the age of 49. Charles Augustus Goodrich writes of George Ross, as a lawyer, 
Even before the revolution, he was among the first of his profession, a rank which he continued to hold while he practiced at the bar. As a politician, he was zealous, patriotic, and consistent. As a judge, he was learned and upright and uncommonly skillful in the dispatch of business. George Ross started as a lawyer, became a politician, and ended up as a judge. He kept his eyes and his ears open to the needs all around him. It seems that he was just an all-around good guy who did what was needed to be done. Now that's a good example. The end. <laughs>